Hello YouTube, my name is Brian from NY Blade EDC and today I have a different kind of video for you. As you can see, different background. I'm in my basement, needed to get a little bit more space here for my camera. So uh, yeah, as you guys know by the title, you probably clicked on this because you were building an EDC bag and need some ideas. So these items and things I'll talk about, uh, you don't have to buy, you don't have to put in your bag. I do not have all these things in my bag as well. And uh, they're just kind of uh, helping points, try to help you guys build a bag and make it what you need it to be. So to, to start here, I wanna clarify, this is an EDC bag, everyday carry, uh, not a bug out, not a get home, not a car bag, not a shit hits the fan, not a camping bag, it's EDC. So. All right, I wrote down some notes. I wanna keep it short as possible. It will be long-winded. I hope you guys can uh, sit through this. I don't bore you, hopefully, and you guys get something out of it. So to start off, I wanted to start with the bag. Uh, you wanna choose a bag that fits your needs. So look at the size of it. Uh, look at the pockets, how it's all organized, and, and see what you want it to be, you know? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can choose all the way from a small pocket organizer all the way up to the 72 hour uh, rucksacks, which I, get, I think majority of people would agree for an EDC bag, a 72 hour bag is way too much. I like the 12 hour, uh, the Rush 12 from 511. It is considered their 12 hour bag, which would be considered a day bag for me and majority of people. And uh, I think that's the perfect size. So. When you're choosing a bag, you pick the size you want and then try to get a slightly larger size. So for me, the Rush 12 is perfect because it fits all the things I need. And then it has a little spare room so I could throw some extras in there. And that's how I see I should put uh, should pick a bag. Now, when you're filling it, you gotta think about the weight. You don't want it to be more than 20% of your body weight. And to find that weight, I wrote down here on my notepad, you take this formula and that's it. So you take your body weight right there and then times 100 times X, get 100 X, then times your body weight by 20 and then take that number and divide it by 100 and that should be your bag max weight. And that'd be 20%. So for me, 250 pound guy, I can have a pretty heavy bag. Um, some smaller guys that weigh like even 140 pounds, 130 pounds, you skinny guys, a uh, bag my size might be a little heavy for you but all right now that you've picked out a size and you know how heavy you can go uh, how do you want it to look do you want it to be tactical do you want it to be like a school bag like the Jan sport bags or just like a plain like hiking bag camping looking bag so yeah I think some people don't want that tactical look they think oh I got a tactical looking bag people are going to know I'm carrying stuff in it and, and get intimidated. But the 511, it's got the molly on it. It just allows you to attach stuff to it. That's how I see it. I don't care about the tactical look. Um, and then also think about your patches or your look. Think about your patches, like your med patch on your med kit and your morale patches. So if you have stuff you think you want to put on there, put it on there. Just make sure um, you're not offending the Karens because they'll tell you what, they'll come after you. So some of you guys like that i definitely do not want to be daring with a or dealing with a karen at work so i keep my patches fairly simple i'll show you mine in a little bit uh where will you be ca carrying the bag so you're going to be in an office setting are you going out to like a national park are you going to cities are you going to be in the countryside um, this will determine like what kind of self-defense items you carry because you're gonna have to check the legality of them so now, items to have, these are all suggestions. You don't need to have everything I talk about. Remember, it's your bag. Make it how you want it and how, how you feel it fits your needs. So, uh, like I said earlier, I don't have all these items. And the first one, I actually don't have. So, um, first item, multi-tool. They're very versatile. They come in many forms and styles. Uh, they have a wide price range, so they fit all your budgets and stuff. You can get the cheap ones, you can get the expensive ones, you can get like the Leathermans, the Gerbers, blah, 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 everything in between. Um, they're simple 
and then you can go all the way up to intricate things with like 20 some tools on it so like the little uh swiss army knives with just the, the small little things all the way up to your leather mints and i'm sure there's more that i'm not talking about here but all right a knife it's always good to have a dedicated knife in the bag either it be folder or a fixed blade uh, this is just the one i have in my pocket i do have one in my bag and i'm not pulling it out here for you but this is my delica um i bo i recommend having both a fixed blade and a folder because obviously fixed blades have their place and folders have their place so throughout the day you might have a task that needs a little bit stronger of a blade a folder especially one like this uh might not do it for you so you might have to bust out that fixed blade which in my bag i carry an izula and i have a custom uh from bgm john at bgm uh all right moving on lights so i like to have multiple lights i have a big one a medium one i have a small one and i also have chem lights people always forget about them so chem lights are good for low light situations when you, you need lights uh you can be they could be signal markers uh any they have a bunch of different uses so i like to have multiple lights to have uh try to keep a small one a medium and a large like i have here and for different applications like this one is a spotlight for long distance this is a nice medium range to close range uh, fairly bright light lasts a long time and rechargeable lights uh, i like to use every day so these ones i, I actually use them fairly often so the rechargeable is nice if they're going to sit around i recommend like the double a's uh, lights with like double a's uh, i have one here on my bag this is my olight i5t eos this is a double a i don't use it very often so that one's nice so i suggest if you're not going to use them every single day get a double a light or it doesn't even have to be double a just a non-rechargeable i just hit the camera I, I, uh, i'm sorry for that all right moving on a battery bank so i carry a battery bank in my bag which i'm getting for you this is it this is the rav power you don't have to get that brand that's just the one i happen to have um battery banks are good because phones and rechargeable items such as those flashlights i just showed you uh they will die and it'll be smart to keep a battery bank big enough to charge your phone or other items multiple times and uh this one charges my iphone 11 that i'm filming on about four times on one charge so it's fairly fairly strong uh battery bank and uh sticking to the battery bank theme here uh, I also like to carry my spare cable. So this is my phone charger, this is my light charger, and this is the charger for the battery bank. I also care, carry a wall brick. So that is allows me to charge this when I need to charge it. And then it also allows me to charge my phone on the wall so I don't have to use this if I don't need to. So that's what's good about carrying the wall brick as well as the, the power bank. So, uh, let me flip the page here. Sorry, I'm trying, I'm having troubles here. I got my notepad. All right, so next, uh, spare clothes. I like to carry at least boxers and socks everywhere I go. Um, your feet get wet, you're gonna be miserable. I'm telling you, your feet are gonna start to hurt. You're gonna be in pain and you're going to be miserable and you're going to not want to be where you're at and all that so if you can change into dry socks and boxers at least it'll make you feel better throughout your day um if you have a bag big enough to carry a full set of spare clothes like a shirt pants socks uh, boxers do it uh, you never know what you're going to run into you spill paint on you you spill some food on your shirt now you have a clean shirt to change into uh, pants same thing you fall down in mud, get all muddy. It's, it's just nice to have spare clothes. Um, I didn't put any on here because you guys know what clothes looks like and stuff. Um, I also like to add in, carry like a beanie hat or something if you're in a cold weather area or some kind of head covering such as like a shemag. For me, I carry this more for uh, sun protection and uh, 
when I go camping, I actually bring this bag with me and I use this to grab my uh, cast iron pan out of the fire. It works good for that. So got double use. Um, also a rain jacket is a good idea to carry. I have one in my bag. It's a nice light one. It's not a super downpour kind of rain jacket, but it'll keep me dry for the nice drizzly days. Um, all right, moving on. Hygiene products. So hygiene products like a toothbrush, uh, Q-tips, there's a toothbrush, spare toothbrush and toothpaste. I carry both of them. Deodorant, some Kleenex tissues, floss, and then especially in the winter months, a chapstick or a Carmex in this case. Food wipes, these are basically uh, baby wipes for guys and uh, anyone that wants fragrance-free wipes. Uh, dual purpose, you could take your baby wipe baths with them, or if you need to wipe your bum, they they do a very, very good job of that. Um, they're organic, yeah, they're plant-sourced fibers, which is pretty cool. So they do uh, disintegrate and stuff, so that's a good thing to have. But yeah, hygienic, I, hygiene products, uh, it's just good for feeling good, you smell good, clean, it boosts your morale. Uh, that's just the thing for me. I get in my car after work and I take a baby wipe shower sometimes. Uh, it just helps me get home not being miserable, smelling like garbage all day. So that's what hygiene products are good for. Um, now cordage and glue and tape. I forgot to open this patch, so excuse that. So paracord. I have tape, but I don't carry glue. I can't find my tape. Oh, there it is. All right, there's my, my duct tape around a card. And I don't carry glue because I don't really feel like I necessarily need it uh, that often. So, uh, cordage and tape and glue, it's all good to have because they all have different uses and stuff. Uh, they can be used for plethora of stuff. Just simple, like to tie up some things, you never know. Uh, you can cut pieces off of this. Tape, obviously. Duct tape is, is good for almost everything. So it's awesome to have those in your bag. Now, uh, dry box or a bag, doesn't matter. <laughs> Excuse me. You, you get caught in the rain sometimes. Uh, your phone's in your pocket. You don't want to get it wet. So a good thing to do is put it into a dry bag or box and put it inside your bag. Uh, I don't carry a dry bag like a dedicated dry bag, but I do carry a Ziploc bag and it works for temporary uh, temporary use. So I wouldn't drop this into a lake and trust it, but if it's raining and your bag's getting wet, if this is in this bag, if your phone's in this bag and this is in your bag, it should be all right. But if you wanna spend the money and get a dedicated dry bag or box, either one, uh, you can do that. And between the two, I prefer a bag just because it, it saves room when you're not using it. You can fold it up versus the box is going to be rigid, but that's a perk to it as well. If it's rigid, it'll hold its shape and protect your phone from even like getting punched or hit or something. I don't know why you get punched in your bag, but you never know. Now, snacks. I carry a few snacks in my bag. I only got to grab two of them, three of them, really. I'm gonna count this as a snack, but this is also for like medical reasons how I carry this. So I carry Cliff Bars, these are the minis, Newtons, and uh, Werther's Original. Uh, these two are stuff that I eat. This is, I have another reason why I carry that and I'll tell you in a little bit. So snacks, obviously you get hungry throughout the day. You just snack on one and you'll be good. All right, notepad. I'm reading my notes off of here. I got a bunch of notes for you. So notepads, you can keep your daily notes, dates, times. If you're a songwriter, singer, think of some lyrics you wanna write down, write them down. Uh, I like these field notes because they're they're simple, they're small, and uh, they, you can get the packs of them. And majority of the, uh, the night, uh, notepads you can get in packs as well. But I just like these ones because these are the uh, National Park packs. So. They come in different colors and and stuff. And I just like the graph paper. These are the dots and stuff. So I choose this one. Now, sticking to that theme, 
uh, writing utensils. I've got a pen. I carry a carpenter's pencil just because that's it's easy to sharpen and then a marker, uh, Sharpie to be exact. So I carry a fancy pen for myself and writing my notes. Someone asked me to borrow a pen. I do not hand them this pen. I give them a little cheap Bic. So, or BIC for you people that call it that. But yeah, I just keep, I carry a cheapo pen to loan to friends. Uh, I would never loan my hundred plus dollar pen to anybody. That is, it is what it is. I'll even hand them a pencil or even a Sharpie if they wanted it before I hand them that pen or my uh, tie scrap. So writing utensils, anything you can write with, I suggest you carry in your bag and carry multiples. So good thing to have multiple pens and markers and everything. So next, and I forgot to mention the beginning of this, uh, all these were not in order of importance. It's just whenever I thought of them, I wrote them down. So my washing machine is going off, so I hope you guys can't hear it. But next is a reusable bottle. I like to use the phrase, save the turtles as a joke, even though it's a reality, I want the turtles to be saved. <laughs> so uh, it just keeps your waist down and reusable bottles, reusable bottles are typically a little bit more rugged than a typical uh, Poland spring water bottle. Um, water is your most important resource. That's the one thing I like to, to live by. All right, lighters, matches, anything to start a fire. Uh, trying to grab it here. I carry two Bics and as well as uh, one Zippo. So a Bic, Zippo, all the other ones, uh, not really sure what other brands there are, but they come in handy. And uh, I don't smoke, but I know a ton of people that do. And they always ask if I have a lighter. So there you go, I got a lighter. Uh, it's like if you smoke or not, it doesn't matter. You can light a fire. Uh, you could burn the end of a, a paracord that you cut off. And uh, it's they got some multiple uses for them. So that's why I carry those. All right, moving on, compact mirror. I don't carry one. These are one of the items I don't carry. Um, they're not just for women to do their makeup with. Uh, you can check your hair, the teeth, or make sure your face is clean. Like, it's just simple things. So, uh, it also doubles as a signal mirror that's going in towards like the survival bags or the get home bag kind of thing. Um, but you can carry it for, for, uh, hygiene purposes. But, all right, sunglasses. So I'm going to put them there. These are my heat wave sunglasses um simply just to protect your eyes from sun uh, these are ANSI Z87 rated so they're rated for me to carry and use at work uh, for anything like that <coughs> excuse me I'm still fighting this cold uh it's been a while but <clears throat> next hard copy maps not a lot of many not a lot of people think about this it's uh if you go into an area where your service is bad and you can't get your phone to pull up GPS, a hard copy map never fails. And I don't care if you visit the area frequently uh, or not, it's good to have a map because just simple things as you don't have service in a simple area, you got a map, boom, there you go. Now, reading the map, you need to know how to read a map. Very important skill to know. Uh, old tech for the win right <laughs> Alrighty, cash and checkbook so i like to carry cash and uh even my checkbook drop my knife here um trying to get my wallet out here this is going to be wrapped in the one so carry a wallet i carry this is my ridge wallet i'm trying to cover my card even though you can't see the number uh this is my ridge wallet i love it i have cash i always carry cash and uh, my checkbook is always in my bag as well. Just in case, for one, your card gets declined, uh, the machine is down for some reason, or the place only takes cash and you just didn't simply know it. It's nice to have maybe about $50 all the way up to 200. I wouldn't carry much more than that just because say you lose your bag or someone knows you carry that cash, they're gonna steal it. So 
uh, minimize your loss. I'd say 50 to like 100 is the best. But some of you that need it, $200, go ahead. Um, work gloves. I don't carry work gloves, but I am getting a pair. Uh, simply because a good set of gloves protects your hands during the hard labor. And that's it, you know. Uh, even if you're touching hot things for some reason, uh, gloves give you that little bit of a barrier to help you not burn your hands. So just make sure you're not wearing like nylon that will easily melt. But all right, moving on. I'm, I'm trying not to ramble here because this is a long video. I'm already at 20 minutes. Uh, spare keys. Carrying a spare house or car key just in case you lock yourself out and happen to have your bag with your keys in it saves the day. Um, nothing worse than getting locked out of your house. No one's around with a spare key and you're stuck outside in the snow or the rain. <laughs> so speaking from experience here, carry a spare key. Um, Self-defense items. So like a dedicated fighting knife, a baton, pepper spray, which I do happen to have on my bag, a spike, those little stabby spikes people make and stuff, and even a firearm. I say check your legality and your, your local laws and regulations and all that. And uh, I suggest carrying as many as many uh, personal safety items and self-defense items as possible. So getting after that, I want to get into med kits. So I carry a med kit on the side of my bag. This is not the best camera angle for this. But I have a med kit on my bag, as you guys can see. And these can range anywhere from like the boo-boo kits with like band-aids and uh, sting and bite cream, all the way up to like a trauma kit where you have a tourniquet, uh, hemostatic agents, five by nine gauze, and, and all that good stuff. So you can make your own, which I recommend building your own. Uh, don't don't buy one that's pre-made because only items or only put the items in that you're comfortable with using like don't get the tension pneumothorax needle if you don't know what you're doing you will and you you can and you will kill someone with one of those I don't carry one of those I'm not trained in it and I don't want to be so I carry a tourniquet I have gauze I have hemostatic gauze uh I have band-aids, I have burn cream, I have bite and itch cream, I have rubber gloves, I have my CPR certification in there, and that's it. A little bit of medicine, like Advil, and, uh, Jesus, little, little pink pills that help with allergies, I'm thinking of the name, I can't think of it, but, Benadryl, that's it, Benadryl, I have Benadryl, and, uh, as well as emergency blankets, so, I do have some extras I forgot about in there, but, that's that's a good everyday middle ground uh, med kit. I also have the trauma shears on the outside that I just forgot about. So you can build your own. That's what I recommend. Uh, if you want to watch other videos on building a med kit, I suggest Skinny Medic on YouTube or uh, Prep Medic. Both of those guys know what they're talking about. They're great. And that's how I learned how to do uh, building my med kit in, in certain tricks and tips and stuff for actual medical use um now next is certifications i like to carry my cpr first aid uh card on me in my bag i have multiples i have two copies i have one in my bag and one in my car and you don't have to carry these but because the good samaritan law can protect you if you're doing cpr on someone and they didn't want it if they're unconscious technically implied uh consent is is there but so moving on from first aid cpr certs you got the osha's like the osha 10 osha 30 so on uh you got your firearm licenses like your your concealed carry weapons license uh equipment licenses such as like if you you're an operator and you have license to operate like a crane license that i would carry that in your bag just so you don't forget it and last but definitely not least because this can be anything. Um, I like to call these wild card items. So a wild card item is something I call it. It's an item that gets carried for a day or two that usually isn't in the bag. 
um, hence why I say sizing up, getting a bag a little bit larger than you actually need. This is so you can throw this this item or items in and have them. Uh, it may be a tool you will need for a special project on one occasion that justifies having it for just a day and not carrying it every day. So this is the, the wild card item, I like to call it. It's just something, you know, I'm working on this project today. I need a special tool and that's what's gonna be in my bag. So you can take stuff out to put that in if you need to. But this is why I say size up so you can toss that in there and not have to remove any of the items you think you need. So that's why I say size up. But with that being said, I've covered everything that I can think of. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Leave a like or a comment. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching if you made it this far. And good luck with your bag build and stay prepared. Thanks, guys. Catch you in the next one.